Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to share three fun ideas and activities for teaching letter names and letter sounds in your classroom. If you've seen my videos before, then welcome back. And if not, my name is Susan Jones. I am a former first grade and K through two literacy teacher. And right now I am currently out of the classroom as I am getting my master's degree in curriculum and instruction. And I spend a lot of time here on YouTube now sharing tips, ideas, and strategies for K through two teachers just like you. So if you're looking for some fun ideas to teach the alphabet, go ahead, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's just dive in. Okay, idea number one is going to be a pretty basic one, but as you teach your students about letter names, make sure you are focusing on the letter sound. We really want our students to understand that as we read, we want to make meaning, and those letters, those graphemes, are just there as a way to represent the sounds that we hear. So for instance, you will definitely want to attach an image with those letter names that you're teaching. I know that at my old school and at Theo's school right now, they use foundations, so when they go ahead and teach those letter names, they actually say B, B, bat. And they have on their cards, they have one image that kind of represents, so students can think back to, represents the sound that it makes. So if you don't use a program like that when you are teaching your letter names and letter sounds, make sure you pick one beginning sound image for each of the letters for students to reference back to. After you go ahead and introduce that sound and the grapheme that matches that sound, you can do something like a beginning sound sort for students to give you a thumbs up or a thumbs down to let you know if that letter sound and that letter is present at the beginning of those words. You could definitely do this a bunch of different ways, but what I would do is, let's say if the letter was B, B you can write a letter B on there so they can see the grapheme. You would have that picture of a bat or a ball, whatever your focus image is. And then you could either show students pictures that start, some start with B and some don't, and they can give you thumbs up, thumbs down, or you can go ahead and say different words aloud and they have to listen in to hear if they hear that B, that B sound at the beginning. This would be a pretty easy thing to do whole group or in small group. And if you wanted to take it one step further, you could do something like these sound sorts that I have that look like this. Now I made these last spring with phoneme isolation in mind. So I made some for beginning, medial and final sounds. But the concept here you can see is the same. These are made in digital digital format as well as cut and paste format. And you can see here that students will look at the images and they will say, oh, does this have that beginning B sound like B at the top there? If it does, they will drag it over to the thumbs up column. And if it does not, they will drag it to the thumbs down column. And of course, if it was printable, it would be a cut and paste and they would paste it in the right side. Idea number two for teaching students letter names and letter sounds is to make it multi-sensory. Now I shared some great ideas for using multi-sensory activities in my how to teach sight words according to the science of reading video. I'll go ahead and link that down below if you wanna watch that after this one. But those ideas apply here as well, except instead of students actually doing that with a sight word, they would do it with the letter name or letter sound. So you could turn off the lights and give students those little, um, um, they're like the little finger lights and they could go ahead and draw a capital B draw a lowercase b. You can do the same with skywriting. Have them hold up their arm and their pointer finger. Have them make a lowercase b or an uppercase b. Creating those letters in Play-Doh or in shaving cream or sand. All of those are great ways to make sure that students are touching and feeling and hearing those letter names and sounds in different ways. And I would just remind you that as you have your students create those letters in those different formats, that you are still connecting that sound to that grapheme the whole time. So you might wanna have students say sound, so they can say b, and then they can go ahead and create it and then say the letter name. So they might say b, b, or they can do it at the same time. Just still make sure you're connecting that sound. Another great way to use some multi-sensory activities would be through songs. I think Jack Hartman has a bunch of great ones. I think it's see it, say it, sign it. He has a whole bunch of videos where you will see the letter, you'll say the letter, and then they can actually sign it using American Sign Language. And then he also has another popular video with secret stories, and this one emphasizes the sound that each of the letters makes. I will link those down in the description as well in case you wanna check those out. 
Okay, idea number three for teaching the letter names and letter sounds is practice, practice, practice. And if you've been around for a while, then you will know I like to practice skills with my students through fun games. I have a few different games I wanna share with you. The first one here is called Five in a Row. And you can see I made these games a couple years ago when I was working with my kindergarten students. And I actually separated the letters into groups of three and I did it based on the order of letters and letter sounds that Foundations teaches. So here in this first one, you can see T, B, and F are all together. So after students have been introduced to those letter names and sounds, I have three different boards for that collection of letters. So you'll see that students could spin it down below and just identify the matching uppercase letter. That would kind of be our very basic, our beginning uh, level of where students might be at. The other one would have them spinning the uppercase letter and simply identifying lowercase letters. So they would match the uppercase to the lowercase. And lastly, students would spin it and they would have to match the correct sound. The concept of this game is pretty simple as students would just go ahead and spin, find the match, cover it with a cube. And if they were playing with a partner, it would be the first partner to get five in a row would win or they could play it by themselves and just keep going until they get five in a row. I have that for all the letters, but if you want to grab those boards for T, B, and F, I will link that down in the description below. It links to my product, so make sure you download the preview and you can print out those boards and give it a try with your students. Another fun game I like to play with students is called Roll A Sound. It looks like this. Now, this one was made with, again, phonemic awareness in mind, where they are thinking about that beginning, middle, or ending sound. But if you were playing with beginning sounds, sound, students would simply go ahead and roll that die. They would look at the image and then they would have to write down the letter that matches that sound. So they're writing the grapheme to match the phoneme. They would continue rolling and writing down that letter until one of those rows is completely filled up. Again, they could do that with a partner and go back and forth and see who can fill up a row first, or they could just do that by themselves until they fill up one of those rows. I'll go ahead and link that one down in the description as well in case you want to check that out. Lastly, I made a little freebie called Shopping for Letters. It looks like this. This one just has a bunch of little shopping carts with some uppercase letters on them. And then there are three different levels of tiles. There's the uppercase matching, lowercase matching, and sound matching, similar to that five in a row game I shared earlier. And for this, students will simply sort through the tiles and they will have to cover up the ones in their shopping cart to go ahead and make a little match. So again, they can practice uh, uppercase to uppercase matching, uppercase to lowercase matching, or letter name to letter sound matching. As always, that one too will be linked down in the description, and I think I already mentioned this, but that is a freebie you can try with your students. So there you have some ideas for teaching the letter names and letter sounds in your classroom next year. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you get notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye guys.